and welcome to Nixie Clock Part 2, the power supply. This is the power supply that I used. I didn't design it myself. I changed some of the component values, but that's about it. And it's a standard configuration for an MC34063 switching IC. Uh, we'll just talk through the circuit. Basically, V in or power supply comes in, pin 6, which is VCC, and then it goes through RS, which is the sort of uh, shunt resistor. And basically, when the current gets too high, it's sensed on pin 7 and it backs off the drive so the current returns to what value you want and you calculate later on. The 180 ohm resistor is there because in the circuit when you're doing a step up circuit it shows 180 ohms there. Whether you need it I don't know because we've got an external FET driving the system so you may not need it but it's there. The timing of this circuit IC is controlled by the capacitor CT and it's got a little star against it, asterisk. So we'll calculate that. that. That value has to be calculated later. There is a, a, a transistor between one and two, and it, that's the switch collector and the switch emitter. There is no pull down on pin two. It only can pull up via the transistor to the supply. So this little circuit here provides a faster pull down. When pin 2 goes high, current flows straight through the diode and charges quickly the uh, gate capacitance of the FET. When gate 2 is switched out and floats, the 1K resistor here pulls the base down and as soon as the base gets 0.6 or 7 volts, lower than the emitter, the transistor turns on and quickly discharges the gate capacitance to ground. So it kind of speeds up the turn off. The FET is a 200, 250 volt FET I think in that region because obviously the supply output is going to be 170 to 220 volts. The coil is it's got asterisk, we'll calculate that value later. This value is way too low if I want if I wanted a, a low ripple, but it's a value I had. I don't have a lot of high voltage capacitors. The feedback control is via this network here, and basically all I'm doing is when the pot is at its lower end, it uh, will give us about 220 volts out, and when it's wound up to the high end it drops it to about 170. So we've got 170 to 220-ish volt range, which is, you know, it's good enough to adjust for the Nixie tubes. So that's basically the circuit. And we'll go on to describe how we calculate the values for RS, L1 and CT next. Look, this is the formula. Well, these are the formula taken from the data sheet for the MC34063. This is what the function is what we're looking for. And that is the formula on how to obtain what we want. In the book or data sheet, they do not have steps. But basically, they just show you this chart. And it looks quite daunting, quite complicated, but uh, it's easy to follow. EEV blog did a walkthrough on this itself. If I can find that, if I can remember where the video is, maybe I'll post a link. But basically, if you follow through in the steps, it's quite easy to get to an answer. It's basically each time you solve one of these, you use it somewhere else. V out is the voltage that you want. 
VF is the forward voltage of your rectifier diode. V in is the minimum voltage that you're going to supply to the circuit. And that's your decision, that's up to you. The same as V out. V sat is the saturation voltage of the drive transistor. Well, I'm using a FET and uh, I decided that rather than try and find out exactly what it was just for this, I would say the same as VF, it's about a volt. As we're looking for volt outputs of 220 volts, so difference between half a volt and one volt, I, I'm hoping, yeah, won't make a, a lot of difference in the grand scheme of things. But so basically, you just feed the numbers in, which I've done here. And so T on divided by T off is 20, the ratio is 21.45. And here F is the frequency at which you want to run it at. So I picked 100 kilohertz. So T on plus T off is 10 microseconds. Then we need to calculate T off. And this is the formula for calculating T off. And again, the things that it's asking for, T on plus T off, T on plus T off, you calculated it over here. T on divided by T off, well, you calculated it up here. So it's just a matter of, num matter of putting those numbers into that formula and you come out with a time. And again here, you know, you've just calculated, actually there's a mistake, that should say, I think, T off. As you can see that the value put there is 4.45 e to the minus 7, which is that one there, which is the answer for T off. So I've obviously made a mistake when I type that on. That should say off. I'll have to correct that at some point. The capacitor value is 4 e to the minus 5 times T on. And that boils down to about 382 picofarads. But we'll just put the nearest preferred value to that. The maximum output current, I decided that 30 milliamps are spread across six Nixie tubes. Five milliamps each is well more than they need. So a bit of headroom, so I went for 30 milliamps, as you can see there, 30 milliamps, which gives us a peak switching current of 1.35 amps. And here's one of our first components we calculate, well we've calculated CT, which is the first one for our frequency. The second one now is the resistor shunt, and that's come out at point 225, 0.22 ohms. Well, on the circuit you'll see I put two resistors in parallel, and so I've got two 500, 500 milliohm resistors, giving me about 250 milliohms, close enough. And then the minimum value for the inductor, again, you know, VSAT, counted it as one, V min. You know, I did 12 volts in, and I said I said to myself, well, plus or minus 10%, so V min is 10% minor, 10% down from 12 volts, about 10.8. I peak switch, we got from up here. So again, punch all the numbers in, 83.5 microhenries. It's not a standard preferred value. I had some 100 microhenry inductors, so I bumped one of them on the circuit. And the last step is what value of capacitance you would like to if you want to define the ripple. Well, here I did an arbitrary value of, I said, well, I have one volt of ripple. Um, punched it in and it came out at 112 microfarads. Well, you know, you can see from the circuit, I only had 4.7 microfarads. So my ripple is going to be higher than one volt. There's the circuit in all its glory, and uh, <laughs> there's the power supply, 12 volts, 
just shy of 10 milliamps quiescent current and going up 217.65 volts and if I turn the pot to the other end uh, 170 and a half so, so there you have it yeah. the Nixie clock power supply design and uh, if you liked it Please, uh, you know, hit the share, hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell, so you can be notified when I release another video. So, hope you liked it. See you next time.